Hello and welcome to this iMesh tutorial video and today I'm going to make a ArcViz room and I've already actually done this render and I decided I wasn't happy with it so I'm going to record the tutorial again. So so this, so this, let's just jump straight in. So I'm going to be using this little um, like mood board program. It's, it's called PureRef, P-U-R-E-R-E-F and if you go onto Google, you can find it as free. They do ask for a donation, but you can, I mean, it depends how generous you're feeling, but you can give them zero dollars if you really want to. Um, but they're, but this program is really cool. So what you can do is just go onto Google, find any images that you like and drop them in and press control V and you can do all sorts of things such as organize your images and save this canvas and you can make a really cool mood board. And I'd highly recommend you use, you use mood boards if you're going to make any kind of image because all professionals will use mood boards at some point to try and get some ideas because you'll you'll never be able to make an image which is absolutely perfect normally without them because it you know you want to be inspired you want to find some images which really make you happy <laughs> and you know and you can find kind of lighting moods all sorts of things so colors lighting and everything to find something you like so yeah use re use references if you're gonna make an image and I've gone and made a collection, so I'm going to be making like a dining room set. So it's basically it could be like you know, four chairs, a table, some lamps, and and a nice scene. I'm actually going to make something similar to this because I think this looks really really cool, and I like how the light is kind of shining through. And there's kind of a suggestion of something through here. So I'm going to try to incorporate that into my image, as well as these lamps, which I love. They're by a brand called Lee Broom. So I'm going to drop those in. And I also love this panels here. And generally the kind of lighting feel that then that is that these images have. So they're kind of uh, a soft light with un almost no sunlight. So I think oh, this is the only one with sunlight coming in. But then all the others kind of just have this nice shadow on every on all of their legs. Um, so I'm going to try to do something like that and I'm going to be using quite an interesting lighting technique which I'll come to a little bit later but I think in the end of the day if your images look good it doesn't really matter what lighting you're using so that is something I'll explain a little bit later um, but first we might as well just make the scene so I'm just going to grab a box and bring this up just make it go a little bit above the, the floor there we go and then I'm going to go into edit mode and bring this up so maybe two and a half meters tall, that seems about right. And then just stretch it all out and try to make an interesting room. So normally you would have floor plans, but I'm just going to make this up and we'll just see what happens. So, well, I'm not making this completely up because I've already done this. So I'm going to try to make something similar to what I've already made. So yeah, something like this. And yeah, let's go. I'm going to add a camera now so I can kind of see how this is going to start looking. So I'm just going to add a camera. Oh, there's already a camera in the scene, isn't there? So I'm gonna press zero, and then, oh, so I'm, I'm using Shift F, and that is a key that I'm that I have assigned, and that allows me to do fly navigation or walk navigation, and to do that, basically go to view, uh, mm, view navigation. Ah, let's try again, uh, navigation and walk navigate. How many times I'm gonna say navigation? And you and I right clicked on it basically and clicked assign shortcut and I did shift F and that was basically the shortcut that was for 2.79 which they for some reason removed but I love it so it's back there we go so I'm just gonna fly it into the room you basically use the WASD keys and you can fly it around so something like this and a rule of thumb if you're gonna be doing arc viz you always want your camera to be at 90 degrees or well, most of the time obviously like if you're just doing a standard shot um, you can deviate a little bit but Generally, if you look at most ArcViz renders, they are, have straight lines. They they really want to keep straight lines everywhere. So all the all the walls will be going directly 90 degrees. And if the camera just feels like it's a little bit off, it can sometimes just not look as professional. Um, even photographers, when they're photographing a scene, they set the they would set often the camera up and shoot it at 90 degrees. I think that's just a general rule. It's obviously not like completely set in stone but if you do that for your renders to start with at least then you'll be that's like the first step to me making some good images and then you can deviate from that when you want to experiment a little bit so I think that's fine I'm going to go to the camera and set this to field of view um, because I I don't know I find that easier to think about and then I'm going to set this to something like 
I mean, it really depends on the room. If you're if you're doing an image which is you really want to get as much as possible in, you want to pr probably go to about seventy. Uh, but for me, that I think I think that is often too high. But it really depends on the size of the room, um, and it's also good actually if you're doing a a shot for some people who want to sell their property and they want the property to look as big as possible, then 70 is quite cool. But for more artistic shots, you want to go quite low. I think for this one, I'm actually going to go really, really low, probably something like this. And then that gives a more orthographic feel. And that basically is almost removing the perspective the further you go down to zero and everything will look more flat, which is also something that, that these have. So everything like this one, for example, kind of feels like it's got... Uh, an orthographic feel to me, you know, imagine you tilt this up and it's going to be on that grid. This, yeah, never mind. I'm just going to do that. So here we go. Now I'm going to add some windows. Hmm. I think the camera is, I want to move it back. So this is a little trick that you can do. If you want to bring it for a wall, there's this clipping. So I'm going to hold down shift and drag it up slowly. Shift just means you could do it a little bit slower. And I'm just going to do it just through the wall. And then I'm just going to move it across something like this and actually I'm going to move it back even further okay there will be a point where clipping doesn't work for example if you move it too far back you're going to be clipping through the floor and the wall at the same time but I think that should be fine for now I'll probably move it a little bit later and then I'm going to go and add a loop cut with control R and add a window here so control B and just do a, a oopsie just do a really really quick window this is quick and dirty there we go and something like this. I think I'm going to move this over because I, I have already made this room and I, th I want to find something which I had quite similar to before. Maybe something like this. I think I'm going to make this a little bit sh shorter. And mm -hmm. I'm now going to move this wall back a little bit because I don't want to see this wall because if you move this wall off, now the Instantly, the room feels a little bit bigger too. So, let's do something like this. Yeah, maybe something like that. I want to cut this window off. I don't want to see where this window finishes because then you'd have to deal with all, all sorts of things like what's going on outside and everything. But we don't want to worry about that in this particular shot. Um, and okay, so the next thing I want to do is add some skirting. So, I'm just going to grab these edges with uh, control, no, sorry, shift, alt, and click, and click all of these, and press shift D, P, separate, and then click on it, and then you can press F3, convert to curve, and now we have a curve, and now we can add some skirting. So I'm actually gonna use the iMesh Asset Manager, and this is available, if you go onto Google and type in iMesh Asset Manager, however, there are some bugs and we kind of put it on the back burner because we wanted to make the marketplace, then we wanted to do the iMesh exclusive and make loads and loads of products. So we haven't really had much time to work on this much, as much as we'd like. Um, but feel free to download it. For me, it kind of works fine. There are some categories which just don't work for some reason, but generally it works for me fine and I'll be using this throughout the whole video and it should work. There's one thing to remember though, and that is the folder structure. So you wanna have this particular folder structure, otherwise it definitely won't work. And I will be trying to make an update for this to make it work if it, if you don't do this particular structure. But for now, this is the one to remember. So you wanna have the main categories, which will be these main categories. And then you wanna have the subcategories, which will be these subcategories. And then in each category, so each sorry subcategory you want each product to be in its own folder like this so this is one chair another chair and another chair and then in this folder you can have the blend files and the image and then this will automatically link that that particular image that blend file so there we go there's all the chairs and yeah just try to remember that particular folder structure and it should work for you um if you're using mac then i'm sorry but i don't know if that's working <laughs> like properly but that will also be something we'll be trying to fix so yeah go wild download it if it works then that's perfect so I'm gonna to go to architectural and skirting and just I don't know click on one that I like this one and now we have these so I'm gonna click on the oh where is it gone the oh there we go I have got it selected I'm gonna click on these and also select these and just go into local mode and 
I'm going to find one which I like. So I'm probably going to go for, I don't know, this one. So I'm going to click on the curve that we created and and something is wrong. One thing I have forgotten. So if you go to the normals, if you click on this one and click face orientation, this is the wrong way. So if I end up attaching this to this one, it's going to be facing backwards. Okay, it's not facing backwards, so everything's fine, but I do still want to turn this uh, face orientation. So I'm going to go into edit mode, select everything with A and do shift N. And then nothing has happened, but what you can do is click this and flip it inside out. So now the normals will be facing the correct way. And I think this is the back of the skirting actually. But um, yeah, let's click on this one, go into edit mode and just click on this, control L, X and delete. And now we have these, which we don't want. So I'm just going to move these actually to a new collection. Um, let's come out local mode and move new collection and rubbish or trash. Depends where you're from and click OK. And then that will just basically be a folder, which I recommend you have in all of your projects, which would just be something which you just throw something in there, which you might want later, but may not necessarily want to delete it. So you can hide that and make sure you also hide it from this. So anything you don't want, you just press M and move to that folder. So let's just move this down a little bit. Yeah, that's the back, the red piece. Okay, something like here. Okay, and now we just want to add a floor. So the thing I'm going to be using is called mesh, archipack, and then floor. So when you click here, you may not get the, get the icons. And to generate the icons, what you need to do is go to file, uh, sorry, edit preferences, and then go to add-ons and type in archipack. And then when you go to archipack, there's this button here. And if you click that, it will generate all the thumbnails, but it will take about 10, 15 minutes. It really takes quite a long time because it's generating basically all the thumbnails for all of the things. So when I go here and go archipack and go floor, you can then see everything here. So I'm going to use this one and it will generate this, but I can't see anything. So I'm going to click here and click on wireframe. Now we can see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is just go to this mode and click on a corner that I want. Actually, first press shift and tab, turn on snapping, set that to vertex. And then what I can do is just click and drag this one to where I want it to go. And you, know, you can drag that into the corner. So like this, oopsie. And this is a weird bug, but it will go away in a minute, I think. So let's just drag this over. And this one, you know, just roughly. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to see it anyway. Just make sure it's cover the whole room. And then that's a perfect floor. So if I right click now, that's finished. And this thing is still here. Um, <laughs> let's just... Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay, I am going to restart and <laughs> come back in a second. Okay, so I'm back and it looks like the error has now gone. So I'm actually just going to turn this face orientation off because I don't need it anymore. And from this one too. And then this floor, actually I'm going to turn on wireframe so I can see the floor. And then I'm just going to bring this all the way down. So it just goes in line with the floor. And just a little bit above. There we go. And then that's perfect. What I am going to do though is add a slight little bevel bevel and set this to something very, very low, 0 0.0005, just to give it a little edge like this. And I can now turn off wireframe because you can now see, because you can now see it. And yeah, now I want to unwrap the floor. So what I'm going to do is go to this floor and you can see here that for some reason it unwraps them very strange. So it's almost makes each face take up the whole cube square, but and I think that's actually if you want to have multiple materials like this and then then your wood material takes up the whole. But that's not what we want to do right now because I want to do something a little bit different. So I'm just going to remove all of these materials and go here and press shift G and normal. Now it selects all the faces facing upwards. Now I can just press U and smart UV project. And now it has unwrapped all of the faces all facing the correct direction. So now if I was to go to N and I'm I'm just going to add a wood. You can use whichever wood you like, but I'm going to add a material and wood, and I'm going to do wood 43 um, because I think that's fine. And now if I go to, oops, 
a material preview. And now you can see all the wood is all facing the correct direction, but the UV is a little bit too small. So I'm going to go here and press S and 3. And now the, UV, now the wood is going the correct way. I am going to change the wood material a little bit because from because I wanted to make these parts a little bit more prominent than it currently is. So if you go to the node setup, you want to make sure the add-on node wrangler is turned on. Uh, if you go onto Google, it's Oh, I'll show you now. <laughs> it's way easier to explain. So if you go to add-ons and just type in node wrangler, and it's this one here, make sure that's always turned on because then what you can do is press shift and control and click and then it automatically shows you what each one looks like. So this one's generally fine normally, but I want to change it a little bit. So I'm just going to go to a uh, color ramp and go to the material so like this. And now I can make it so that certain parts of the wood which are lighter are glossy and then other parts of the wood which are lighter to be darker for example so but i'm just gonna get this and just slide it all the way up because i don't want it to be too glossy so because the whiter it is the more rough and the more black it is the less rough it is the glossier it is so now that should be fine that's fine um okay and oh sorry i want to plug that into roughness and then I want this one to go into the diffuse so now we can just delete this if you want to, but just move this out of the way. Okay, and next I want to add the material for the walls. And now I'm going to use a material which is by a seller from iMesh actually. He's selling this for $1 only, so I'd highly recommend you check it out. So if you go to iMesh and search for stucco, you'll then find it. It's called Plaster01, and it's an 8K texture, so that's what I'm going to be using now. So I'm going to go to this and press New. And then let's just create the material. So, so I'm just going to drag the material into here. This is the diffuse. I'm going to drag in the normal. I'm going to set this to non-color data. Non-color data. And then go and add a normal map and plug that in here. When it thinks about what it's doing. Okay. And then I'm going to drop in the glossiness. And because this is a glossiness, but this works with roughness, you want to make sure you add an invert because glossiness is basically the inverse of rough. So let's plug that in here and click on non-color data as well. So now I'm just going to go and solo this object just so we can see it. And I'm going to press uh, go to material preview. Okay, and this looks beautiful. Look at this, look at these unwrapped UVs. So I'm gonna unwrap this again. So I know that from my camera, I'm gonna be looking this way. I'm not gonna see this wall. Well, I, I won't do in a minute when I move it out of the way. So I'm only gonna see this one, this one, and these ones here. So I'm gonna try to unwrap it accordingly. So let's just delete this because that's a window. And what I wanna do is just add a couple of seams here. Mark seam and I'm probably going to unwrap the ceiling afterwards. No, actually, I'm going to do this here. So I'm going to add a mark seam. And now I'm going to press 3 and just select these faces. Or press B and highlight them. And now I think this should unwrap OK. So let me just select these. Yeah, and this one here. So now if I press U and unwrap, I'm going to set this to conformal. Now if I go to the... UV editor is a little bit funky, so I'm going to press A to select everything and press N and go to UV squares. And if you Google this, you'll be able to find this plugin, and it is amazing because if you watch this, I'm just going to make this everything go straight. There we go, everything's straight. So now if I go here, that will mean that now the corners will go around the corners perfectly and it should be unwrapped nicely. I am going to go here and press S and scale it twice just to make these a little bit smaller and that should be fine. We're not going to see this wall anyway, but if you want to unwrap this, you can just go to the face and unwrap it. And same for this one here. Oh, I might as well do this one here. And unwrap. Okay, so that is now unwrapped. So, oh, and the floor is not, but that doesn't matter because there's a wood floor over the top, so that's perfect. I think I'm going to leave this to be glossy. at this or just the material that it is. Actually, hmm, I think that I'm just going to actually copy this material. So this is called, I'll call this one stucco. 
or or stucco stucco and go to here and call this and go and here and then press two and just duplicate it because I want it to be a similar material but I I don't really want the color so I just want to go to unplug this one and just have the normal map and I see what this looks like actually and it's going to unwrap a little bit funny because it's still a curve so what I'm going to do is now because I'm okay with it actually what I'm going to do is duplicate sorry shift D enter and then move this one to the trash so we still have that one saved and then what I'm going to do is go to this one and press F3 and convert to first I'm going to unwrap turn this off now I can press convert to mesh and then I can just unwrap these so I'm just going to select this just these front faces and not the back ones yep actually let's go into wire frame so make sure I select everything and then just unselect the back faces now I can unwrap this and see if I can see anything okay that is unwrapped perfectly fine there so I'm just going to do the same for this face and you and unwrap so now they both should be unwrapped this one is a little bit smaller so sorry a little bit bigger than these ones so let me just scale these down so about the same size and just scale this up a little bit it'll just create a little bit more variation but I think I want this to be a little bit more glossy so if we go to shade editor and just go to the preview Okay, so I don't want it to be this rough, so I'm going to probably put this to something like 0.1. Um, but the, and the reason why I'm reusing, reusing this is because it's already quite a nice roughness uh, map that will kind of add a nice bit of variation. But if I just make it a little bit smoother, then it will just create just a nice little bit of an effect and make it make it a bit more glossy. Just mix it in with this, and then that should be fine. I think that'll be good enough for now. And go back to the world. So now we have this. I'm going to add another window in the back here so let's do this and just the quickest windows in the world that's a, a key mistake I always see people do and they make their walls super super thin so when they by the time they add the window the window is completely flush with the wall but that is never usually the case. Usually walls have some kind of thickness, like 20 centimeters or something, or 25 centimeters. So I'm just going to do this. And then when I add the win window from about here, you will then be able to um, see a nice bit of frame. So I'm going to now add um, some window sills, which are super easy to make. So I'm just going to press Shift D, bring this up. I'm going to actually press P to separate it. And just go here. And this is going to be the most basic one ever, but the detail should be just enough to just add a nice little bit of something to the image and then I just want to set these faces and just give it a little bit of an unwrap I'm not going to see that edge so it doesn't really matter so let's just unwrap it that's just something also if you're going to do ArcViz just don't spend time doing things that you don't need to do so now these share the materials so I'm going to add this add a bevel to this let's just turn it all the way down to I don't know, 0 0.01 0 0.001 and maybe give it a couple more okay 0 0.0025 I think that should be fine now I can do sh smooth shading and I'm actually gonna add a thing here and do control B and then you can see the shading there you want it to be nice and tight so I'm just gonna pull this all the way across like this maybe do one here as well and that should be fine I think that would be a nice detail and because we've just made this I'm now gonna duplicate it oops I'm going to set the origin to the center of the mass. So now if I rotate it, it rotates around there. So I'll bring it over here. R minus 90. And just see how this looks. I think I want this actually to come through a little bit like I've got it here. So I'm going to do the same here. 
because that happens sometimes with window frames they make a little bit of an overlap and I think that's also a nice little detail so now I'm going to add some windows so I'm going to go to architectural and go to windows and you know this is actually a little bit of a, a side comment now so I'm going to be using some assets from now on to make this room basically for the rest of the scene uh, apart from a few little pieces and I've heard a lot of comments from people saying that if you don't make all the objects in the scene then you're cheating and that is just simply not true. Um, if you go to any studio that does architectural visualization I guarantee that all of them use assets and because time is money basically and in, in a studio setting they don't have time to make every single piece of furniture in their scene but of course it's a good skill to have and I think that everyone should have that skill to be able to make whatever furniture they need to just in case because often uh, if you're working with an interior designer they will request furniture which simply does not exist in the 3D world so to be able to build that furniture is obviously a very good skill and I hi highly recommend everyone does that but once you know how to make let's say any chair or a window you know there's no point in building a window every single time you want to have an asset for that and you can also build the asset yourself so you've got a library yourself but when you're dealing with when you've made I don't know, 100 interior images and they all use the same window and then suddenly there's a new variation. Like, it's just quicker to go online and just search that window and see if there's a 3D model and, and use that. And like, and a clear example would be for something like, let's say you hire a interior photographer and he would take a nice, beautiful photo and you will say, wow, that photo looks really good. But you're not going to complain that he didn't make every single piece of furniture in that shot. Like he didn't go and make the sofa and make the chair because that's not the art. The art in Arc Viz is more to do with the lighting, the composition, and basically as a photographer, you're basically a photographer in the 3D world. So you want to be able to make some really beautiful images and, and yeah, that, that's basically it. Okay, so let's continue where we were. So I'm going to add in some windows. So I'm just going to add a basic one here, import object. And let's just move this over here and oops let's just press the dot on the number pad so it, it focuses on this object and then just move this over actually I'm going to scale this down so the frames a little bit smaller I'm just going to go into edit mode and just bring this up so it covers the whole frame oh why am I still selecting this that was weird. Let's try again. Just so it overlaps just a little bit. And because this window, we won't be seeing it in this shot, I'm actually just going to remove everything apart from the pieces which I want to see. So let's just mm -hmm. let's try this. Control I and then delete everything else because it will just make the room a little bit darker. And I just want to have the suggestion that there's a little window here. And actually, before I before I delete that thing, I'm going to duplicate it so I can actually use it over here. And now I'm going to do the same here. So let's go back in and delete these. Okay, so now I can add the window here. And this frame that I've built is just a little bit smaller, so I'll just make the window a little bit smaller. There we go. Oops, edit mode. And the last one. Oh, that should be the correct height because I've already done it over there. So, okay, that's perfect. One thing I am going to quickly change is the glass. Um, and the one problem I have with the Blender glass is that it's basically just the worst glass in the whole wide world. I can show you a quick example, actually, of why it's so bad. Um, so, Okay, so this is a glass window. So I'm going to add a sun. Uh, sun. And just make this go through the window. So let's try with no window. Let's do render preview. So you can see there's a nice sunlight there. Now let's drag this window back down. And the sunlight has disappeared. Why? Why? Why is it? Why is this the case? It's so. It's so bad. Because uh, I use uh, V-Ray and Corona on a daily basis, actually, in 
3D Studio Max, but don't tell anyone. And, um, you know, you just set the object to be glass and then it acts like glass. Um, in Corona, they actually have a button which is thin glass, which basically means that it doesn't have any refractive properties, but it does have a reflection. And that's it, because on architecture for Windows, you don't really want it to be fully refractive. You just want it to have a nice look of a glass, so just the reflection. And everything else isn't important because it will just slow down the render time. So anyway, so we, we can make that glass pr pretty simple here. So just go to Shader Editor, and I'm going to do Render Preview while we're here. So and can do Mix Shader. So if you're finding that your viewport takes quite a long time to um, render, what you can do is go to here and go to Simplify, mm -hmm. Simplify, and you can set uh, viewport and texture limit to 1K. And then if I press Render Preview now. It should be quicker. It should okay. I think that was a little bit quicker. We will pretend that that is quicker, but that is also actually something you can do if you're constantly running out of RAM. If you have a lower RAM computer, what you can do is set your render limit to something smaller, because the one thing that I find that takes up the most RAM is often the images. If you have a if you have a six K image, I think that uses about. Um, 300 megabytes of RAM or something. So, yeah, try use these if you're ever having problems. I, I end up using this quite a lot actually. So, anyway, mix shader and then add a light path node. Then add a math and go uh, shadow and diffuse and a trans transparent into here. So, now what it's saying is that any shadow or diffuse will be set to be transparent. So it's not going to be casting any shadow, which it shouldn't be generally anyway, not especially for not window glass. Plug that in here. And hopefully, there we go, we have some glass with a sunlight. So that is cool. I'm just going to leave, turn that back off now. And now I'm going to start adding some extra details. So the one thing I like from this reference is the is this little window here, which I think looks really cool. I love how it disperses the light coming through here. So we're going to make something like this. And then I'm going to make also a wall like this. And yeah, that's another example. Well, that's quite nice too. Just like a little bit of a wobble. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm going to make this glass here. So one thing I actually noticed with this is also a really nice detail, which is almost hidden, but you know, these are kind of things which can really add to your scene, just these kind of things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna add that here. So I'm gonna add a loop cut and bring this across. Whoa, come on. There we go. And then go press three and go here and just bring this part up. And then I'm gonna duplicate this and bring this down and then separate it. Okay, so now this is its own part. And now I can just add some more loop cuts, something like this. Actually, I'm gonna add a couple more. Yeah, and then go select this one, this one, and yeah, I think that should be fine. Let's bring this up. I'm going to go into local mode actually and just remove these edges. Mm, no, I'm not. I'm going to I'm going to just select this. You know, these people are never going to see this part of the image of the object anyway. So let's just whatever. Let's bring this up, but that might, will mess around with the bevel actually. So I'm just going to remove these edges. And then I should be able to add a bevel, I believe. Let's try. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so point zero zero one, and that should be fine, literally. So that's just a nice detail. If I go to my camera view now, there's just this extra detail going along here, which will be holding the window door thing. So that is cool. Okay, so now let's add the window door thing. So let's go to, to the front view and add a a uh, cube. Let's scale this down. Actually, let's scale this up so it fills the whole space. And just about the size I want. I'm going to then apply the scale and go in here and make this thinner, as thin as I want it, the window to be. Something like this. Now press these two and press I to inset and F3 and bridge. There we go. We have a window frame. So now I want to add the little wobbly bit inside. A nice little detail actually might be if I make the window go inside an edge. So I'm going to add a loop cut here. Do Control B. Whoa, come on. And then press E and then Alt S. 
And now that's a nice little edge. Oh, okay, so it's only scaled it up. So let's scale it across on the Y axis as well. There we go. So now I can add the little wobbly window. So I'm going to just add one little plane. Let's uh, scale this down. And I'm going to go into edit mode and add a bunch of loop cuts. I don't know, maybe like nine. And then do control minus. Oh, what? That happened to me before. I swear before. I swear always. If I do loop cuts, I can then do control minus. Wait, did I just do it then? You can do control minus and it basically brings you into the middle one. But mm, that's annoying me. Control minus. Okay, let me try this again. Control minus. No! Okay, never mind. So I'm going to click on the middle face and do O and go to sphere and do G, G and X and just use the middle mouse wheel to scroll that in to make a basically something like this. And then I can just bring this down. Hmm. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, then bring this down. I'm going to do shift and tab to, to lock it in and click this here and just make sure that this is going to go into the slot that I want it to and bring this down. Okay, and bring this over. Right, and now what I can do is add an array. Array and hooray. And make some window that's wobbly. There we go. And glass does generally have some thickness, so I'm going to add some thickness. Solidify. And how thick is that going to be? Let's apply the scale. And. Okay, that's too thick, so let's bring this down. Something like this. This is probably going to be a bit too wobbly, but we'll see when we get to the window. We might just use the scale and scale it in, but I think that's fine. I'm then going to uh, shade smooth, but now it's gone really weird. This is also a common error that I see all the time is the shading, and this is wrong because it shouldn't have a gradient like this. If you have an object which is completely flat and it has a gradient going like this, it's something really simple. Just add Control R, loop cut, do Control B, and you can see this be tightening right up. So that's how it should be. So let's bring this all the way, all the way up, just to the top, and then we're going to hide the top in the frame anyway. So let's bring this up. Ah, I also want to merge the array. There we go. So let's bring this up, and we can add a bevel to this as well. And I'm just going to, okay, that's maybe 0 0.002, okay. I'm just going to add a very quick unwrap because this is also a smaller detail which won't be seen too much from the camera. So if I just do a really quick unwrap, so now if I add a map maybe a little bit later, it will then add some roughness and things. So if you ever have any surface, try to always add some sort of roughness map or at least some normal map. I find that roughness... Um, is a little bit more obvious than normal, especially when things are at a little bit more of a distance. Um, and normal is pretty good when it's more close up because you can see the details, but try to make sure you add at least one or both at least. So yeah, that is this done. So let's go into here and see if it fits. Okay, I'm just gonna go into edit mode and bring them both up. Just so it's touching my amazing thing at the top because they don't need to know that there's nothing going off in here they just think that this frame like if I go to my reference this also just stops they don't know what's going on up here so you can presume that there's gonna be some runners but this could be hidden so which that doesn't matter but one thing I might add is some sort of wheel or something at the bottom so let's just go down to the bottom and see what's going on here so let's just add do shift and right click and then I can just add a sphere cylinder sorry let's bring this down and can press the dot the point and the number pad to zoom in and rotate this 90 degrees and make this a little bit bigger but scale this up because then we can just presume that this okay it's a little bit too big is is going through this frame on, on the underside but you don't need to see that anyway so let's just do that and just add a little bit of detail. 
I, E, I, E. There we go, it's an amazing wheel. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of a bevel as well. There's already a bevel here, so I'm just going to do Control L and apply modifiers, but that didn't work. Is there something over overlapping? Nope. Oh, apply the scale. There we go. Now I can just shade smooth and set this to angle. And let's make it a little bit lower. Okay, that's fine. I think that's a good detail that no one will ever see anyway. So let's just select this, select the whole thing, and then do Shift D and bring it on the Y, something like this, and then do Shift R, R, R. And then it duplicates the whole thing along. So now basically there is a window which will be... I'm just trying to think. I want this to look like it's coming out of this wall, so I'm probably going to hide this edge. So it will look like this comes out here. So let's just bring this whole thing. Okay, that didn't work. Is that the whole thing? Okay, and then just bring this into the wall here. And they can't see what's actually going on here. So, whoopsie. <laughs> so let's just uh, let's just check that it isn't right on the edge. Okay. They will now presume that there's something going on there. But there isn't, and no one needs to know. So let's just think about what we're doing now. I'm probably going to copy this glass material from this one. So let's just go on here and... It's called iMesh Glass, so iMesh Glass, and I'm going to, because I want to be seeing through this glass in the viewport, I'm just going to go to this point and go to Viewport Display and just set it to Bounds, because now I can see what's going on behind it. Okay, I think that's cool, and yeah, why not, let's do a test render. Oh, I've only got one sunlight, okay, so... But we can see what, what this glass is doing, and that should have quite a nice effect. I'm going to do Control b just to focus in on this, just to see how this is looking. And yeah, that's fun. If <laughs> fun is the right word, I don't know. Okay, so now I'm going to start adding some, oh, some runners, some, some boards, some frame, whatever they're called. And it's going to be a similar thing. It's going to be super simple. Add mesh cube. And that's fine. I'm just going to press the point on numpad to focus in. And I'm going to unwrap it while it's smaller. So let's just do a quick unwrap. So I'm only going to unwrap the parts which we will see. So that's fine. And mark seam. Um, no point unwrapping it just yet, actually. Let's just do this and shift tab and go to the bottom. Shift tab. So shift tab to turn the snapping on and just go to the top. So that is fine. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and bring this closer to the wall a little bit and that is fine and now we're going to add an array is this array still turned on on this one because then i could just copy that modifier oopsie okay so i might as well have just added the array by now i think i am too used to just reusing everything let's just do another one array array <laughs> okay i'm not going to get that out of my head now okay so i'm going to add the array all the way across. How quick can I press? How quick can I press the button? Okay, so that is fine. And this skirting is a little bit funky, so let's just go into here and just select these and bring this on the x-axis. I'm gonna turn off snapping, and there we go. And that is cool. Okay, so now I want to add a wood material to this. So let's just go into local mode, and let's apply a wood, which will be uh, materials, wood, and I think I used wood 53, it's like a dark one, okay, and we can just apply that import material, and that is not the preview, but it's a good try. So shader editor, let's just check which one actually just imported. Okay, that's definitely wood, so let's go to material preview, and this is going to look really strange because we haven't unwrapped it just yet. And obviously my simplifier has gone has worked very well. Okay, so I want to unwrap this now, but because there's only one piece, if I unwrap this one, they're all going to copy it. So I want to apply the array and press U and unwrap. And then what I want to go is just go to the UV editor and just check they're all going the correct direction. So these ones are actually going a different direction. So let's just select these. 
and R90. Oh, I've still got a proportional editing turned on, so let's turn that off. Is that the correct? Have I applied the scale? Let's try again. I had not applied the scale, so now it should be a bit better. And just, oh, <laughs> make sure everything's facing the correct direction. And they're all facing the wrong direction, so let's do here and rotate 90 degrees. So, because you want the wood grain to go down like this, I'm just going to scale it five times. Just so you can see the grain going across, and I think that's nice. And then I might just desaturate it a little bit. So, shader editor, hue saturation, and set this to something like 0.8. Okay, so now I want to go back into this mode, click. I want to add, I want to make this back wall. What do you do? Oh, okay, so it's material preview. I wish there was a way to escape because previously, like in past Blender, if you accidentally hit render, for example, because this pie menu makes you do these this accidentally all the time, you could just quickly press Z and you'll exit it. So that would be nice if that was still a thing. So let's just add a plane. Because I want this back wall to be basically uh, darker as well, which is something that I didn't do in the previous example, if you saw that on my Facebook post. So you, I didn't like the stripes because it was basically dark white, dark white, but this one I just want it to be normal. So here we go. Let's just apply the scale and then unwrap it and apply the same material as this one. And let's just go into here, a material preview, just to check. Okay, the this one is facing the wrong direction, so let's just go to here and 90 degrees and there we go. You won't even see this one in the back anyway, but that's fine. That is fine. So now I think this normal map is going to be a little bit too strong, so let's turn that down as well. On the on the plaster. So I think that's cool. I think we should be ready to start adding some assets. So the first thing I'm going to do is add in, I'm just going to copy and paste from this other project because it's already done. Some Libroom lamps. Wow, that was quick. Uh, so it's basically these ones and they're super easy to make and they basically to emit their light what I've done is added a light material and I've got a generated UV I've unwrapped it so it's just the circle takes up the whole UV map and then I've got it set to spherical and for some reason the circle for the generated um, uh, gradient was just off the off the object so you couldn't see anything so I had to I can just show you actually let's go into here and just go to rendered that if this was set to zero, it will just be the gradient is no longer there. I don't know. Am I? I don't know if I did something wrong. But if I set this both to minus one, then it's dead center. So I know keep that in mind. And this is a material from iMesh, and I think that's going to be a little bit too rough. Uh, we'll see. I'll see how it looks in the final render. But I don't think that'll be actually that noticeable. But we, that is actually part of the default material. So if you go to iMesh, and I think if you search for default materials, actually. It should be in a free category. If you look on the left hand side of the shop, there should be a thing called free materials and then it should all be there. So you can then download these and this one is actually called metal marked, gold metal marked. And then the, and then what I did was I applied just a color ramp to give it some color and set that to the emission. So I'm gonna set that to something like four so we can actually see the gradient. And that is a perfect lamp. So let's just move this here. I think these lamps are stunning, so I think that should be fine. And now what I want to do is add a table. So I'm just going to go to tables, and these are all, of course, part of iMesh, the iMesh exclusive, which is $99, and you'll just get everything. You'll get the whole library, which is pretty much insane, um, and it probably makes each product worth about $0.14, cents, which is in inset <laughs> I wanted to say incense but incense is a smelly thing. It's insane. Um, and basically, if you sign up, um, you'll get all access to all new products, and we'll be releasing about 30 new products per month as well. So you get access to all of those as well, as long as you stay subscribed. So, so it's basically a subscription. So you pay for a full year, and as long as you stay subscribed for that year, um, then you'll get all access to all new products as well. You can, of course, cancel at any time. Um, but before you cancel, just make sure you download all the products first. Otherwise, that download button will no longer work but yeah so I'll be using all iMesh assets from now on and you'll be able to follow along if you also have this subscription 
and yeah, here we go. Import object. Let's just bring this over and bring this here. And now I just want to add a one thing I remember actually from this is that this was a little bit too saturated for this shot. So what I'm going to do is desaturate this wood on top. So set this to 0 0.5, 0 0.8 maybe, and I'm going to save before I lose everything. And now I want to add some chairs and I have already pre-selected these chairs. So I'm going to know exactly which one I want. And it's this one, which is a beautiful chair and just bring it here and do Alt D because what Alt D means is that it's duplicating the, the object and its data. So when you click render, it doesn't need to calculate this and this. It's already calculated for both. So select both of these, Alt D and R90. There we go. Instantly round a table. So I'm just going to go into, actually make sure they're not floating. Just a little bit like this. And let's go to the front view to see how that looks. They're a little bit spaced too far apart. So let's just bring them in. I think we can do this origins. Okay, no, not origins. I think it's at locations. Yes. Okay, so now I can move everything together. Whoa. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so let's turn this back off. Rotate this about 45 degrees. And okay, I think that's fine. Um, one thing to remember also in 3D is that you never want any lines to be exactly matching. So you don't want this frame to be exactly over this frame. You don't want this part to be like something in, in part in the way of this piece. And this it might actually be a problem. Um, and I think actually in my last render, it was a little bit of a problem that you couldn't quite see this wire because it's almost exactly in line with this piece, which can make it a bit hard to read the image. And we have another example down here. So whenever you do these images, just try to make sure to try to move things around so you can kind of see everything as easily as possible. It doesn't help that this chair is naturally just quite hard to read in general. So let's just try to make, make it like this. So nothing is kind of overlapping and let's move this one over here. Maybe I think that should be fine. Okay. Um, I mean, there are a lot of legs going on there. So actually let's, maybe I'll rotate it a little bit. Hmm. I don't think any angle with this chair is going to make it any better. So that is fine. I'm now going to add some, uh, dining sets and this is a sneak preview of some upcoming Amish assets so I'm going to go to dining and dinnerware and we are going to release all of these beautiful assets uh, so because I find that in I'm always adding some kind of dining sets but I can never find a full set that's just instantly done for me and I think in my last one I actually did this one but I'm going to try another one I'm probably this one Import object, and then let's just make move it up to the table. And they all parented around this one piece, so you only need to move this one, and then it should be fine. Okay, I think that just a little bit further. I think that should be good, should be golden. Let's move these up a little bit. Okay, and are these okay? Maybe I need to move the whole thing up just a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to move these because I didn't want these I wanted these ones because these have a nice golden edge so I'm just gonna delete all of this and these are parented but I can just do alt P and clear and keep transformation and now these are independent now I can move these up and go to top view and let's just move this up and now we have a set so Let's just grab this whole thing Ooh, and del yeah, okay, there we go. And now what I'm going to do is just do the same thing. So Alt D, rotate it 180 degrees, uh, rotate it 180, rotate it 180. Okay, there we go. Whew. And now select these again, and then we want to do do is do alt and D and rotate it 90 degrees and that should cover the whole table there are going to be some things overlapping so I might have to remove some stuff so okay there's quite a lot going on here so let's just remove these because that is unnecessary and I can then remove some cups as well let's just see what's going on here so I probably want to keep that one delete that one 
and yeah, no one needs to know that. Actually, I'm gonna swap these around. I want to have this one over here maybe, and then have this one over here. Okay, so a little bit more random. And actually, in my previous image, I didn't do this, but I'm gonna add a little plant. So let's go to uh, plants, and let's go and select. I want maybe this one. Okay. Just a little plant here. Bring this down. This on the table. And maybe something like this. And I might duplicate it. So Alt D and Y and then rotate it. And then maybe scale this one down. Because then, you know, no one will know that it's the same one. Yeah, I think that's fine. And now I'm going to add some books to this side, which is also something which I saw in a reference was just some books on a window frame. And actually this window frame was my inspiration for this part, which I think looks quite nice. So let's go and add some books. So one thing I like about the books that we have created and the magazines is that they are not completely square. They're not just square boxes. We've tried to add a little bit more detail. Where am I going? Decorations. And for example, our magazines, they're all a little bit bent because you never find a completely square magazine. But um, yeah, I'm going to add this book. So import object and go in and whoa, scale this down and move this over. So, ah, OK, bring this here. OK, I can delete this one and then let's move these up against the wall. And I do actually know that I wanted another book to be at the front because this is this will be quite a dark scene. And I know that this book at the back is actually a dark book. So that fits a bit better. So let's just move this actually here. And, and there we go. I actually made these books and these book covers and it took forever and I've I've got some of them there's some jokes written on some of these uh, book covers um, I think I made a book called inspirational cats or something so <laughs> if you download these books try to keep an eye out and yeah let's just uh, move these I'm gonna make these books at the back a little bit bigger oh, so I accidentally clicked material preview but I very rarely want that okay let's make this like this Whoa. Why is it lagging here? Okay. And let's bring this out. Okay, these books are massive now. And this one's quite small, so let's bring this up. Oh, cool, I set the origin point there. Nice. So that is looking pretty funky. I'm now going to add a, um, a day bed in the back. And this is also a preview of a model not yet released. So let's just do that, because this is going to be a glass wobbly window. God, that's really fun to say. Glass wobbly window. And then I'm going to add um, a something in the back. You won't be able to see quite know what it, you won't quite know what it is, but there'll be something. And I want to kind of see the edge here. And yeah, let's do that now. So I'm going to, I don't think it's in my collection just yet. So I'm just going to, okay, so this is a day bed and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Just make sure it's coming out of the floor. And if you want to just see what this looks like. Oh, I think, is there an environment light? Okay, there is. So it's basically just one of these. It's kind of like a nice leather with some different wood. I quite like it. This will be released, I think, within a month or so. So um, yeah, check it out. <laughs> okay, so I do know that this is going to be the wobbly window. And I kind of want to see a little bit of detail here. So let's, so let's just move this over here. and. I think that is fine for now. I'm going to start working on some lighting. I want to add something close to the uh, camera here, which is also always a really nice thing to do, is to add some kind of blurry thing to the foreground. That, that's kind of like a cool trick to do, is try to concentrate on the foreground, midground, and background. You kind of want to have three steps. And this will kind of be the background, and this will be the, the foreground and the, the midground, yeah, basically. So actually, I'm going to add a little bit of bevel to this. So let's just 
add a bit because otherwise you'll cut your fingers just touching the wall. So let's go to bevel, bring it all the way down and just add a few and maybe, maybe a little bit less, 0 0.02. Okay, I think that should be fine. Just a little bit of a bevel. And we also have a normal map too, which will also break this up a little bit too. So that is good. Um, okay, so we can do a test render. You won't be able to see very much because there's not much going, there's not much lighting going on. So I'm going to start working on the lighting. And yeah, I, did I mention this at the beginning? I'm going to do a little bit of a strange technique. And the kind of technique, technique that I'm going to be going for is going to be more to do with a light, a lighting studio so a photography studio so imagine like um, a photographer is going to photograph some furniture scenes they will try to emulate like a sky or a skylight coming into a room but then they want to have as much control as possible they don't want to be relying on oh is the weather going to be good outside today they want to maybe try and set up some lights so some area lights or some kind of some kind of light which will emulate a cloudy day because if you're ever going to use a HDR for interior, try to concentrate on using some overcast skies because that's like nature's softbox. And you will always get some really cool images if you use an overcast sky. And then if you're feeling even more adventurous, you can then add a sun, um, which will be emulating a sun. So, But that is not what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be using a sunlight and only a sunlight. And that is something which I've been using quite a lot actually in v-ray um i sometimes go and work in a studio and i have found that this works really well i find i have so much control and it's basically like um adding an area light so let's say if you're in a studio and you want to add an area light so you will be emulating a sky so where is the light okay area and area lights are definitely underrated and they are fast and they're really really cool but i'm starting to use uh, sunlight and I find yeah I just find them a lot easier to use the difference is is that the sunlight is infinitely far away which means like if you have the the for example area light the light will be going out like this instantly from this point so that will create some sort of um what's the word parallax error or something where the shadow will be going off this way and then for this one the shadow might be going this way if the light is close to it but the benefit benefit that you have in doing 3D is that you could just use a sunlight and this is this is effectively a light which is infinitely far away which you can't get in a lighting studio. Um, I think I will actually do some tutorials another time with um, using some HDRs and also do some using area lights because they're all valid options. I would never kind of write any of these off because you know if at the end of the day you create an image which you're aiming for then that is that is that, that is all that's important, you know. I, I guarantee that these, some of these images, for example, if this is a render, which I think it might be, I guarantee that they won't be just using one HDR solution. Like, they'll be doing using many different solutions and maybe highlighting lights, and they'll be using a solution which works perfectly for this situation. So, yeah, I'll be using just a sunlight, and feel free to use area lights or whatever you want to do to that you think will create a better light for your scene. Feel free to use at HDRIs, but I haven't seen anyone use this technique, so let's just go for it. So let's add in a sun. So let's just bring that here, something like this. And so the trick is, so let's bring this down. Actually, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just get a couple of objects in just to speed things up. Okay, we can cancel this now. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab the this and this and maybe just a these two okay and now if i just preview this that is casting a very strong light oh i'm actually going to turn off the environment so let's just so we can see see what's going on so um let's just disconnect okay so now this is effectively just a hdr sorry <laughs> just a sunlight so what we can do here is create a softbox effect and that is using the angle An angle is basically the size of the Sun so if I set this to something like 10 the edges get a little bit more blurry if I set this to 40 the edges get a little bit more blurry again and then if I set this to something like 70 it becomes a you know this is emulating basically a HDR um, so the light coming through the window is casting a nice strong effect on the floor um, 
And if you want something on the ceiling, some light on the ceiling, what you can do is just add a fake floor. So just do something like this. And now what will happen now is Okay, that hasn't done the effect that I'm looking for. Oh, because I've not got that in the... Sorry, let's do this again. Okay, so now it's in local mode. So now we should have some light going against the ceiling because it's bouncing off here and going up at the ceiling. If you set this to maybe something like middle gray or something. Okay, now I haven't, now I haven't got the sun selected, so let's do this again. Okay, so now we can see that there is some light on the ceiling. So if I just move this out of the way again, it's now darker and if I bring this back there's now some light going on the ceiling and I'll probably keep this here I think I think in my last tutorial I didn't do that but I oh, know you can have a play but I'm gonna increase the brightness and see so maybe something like 10 and now you can see that this is creating that effect that you can see in the references that I've got so they've got a very strong sh contrast here and but it's nicely lit so that's almost like what's going on here so you can see a nice shadow but we ha now have so much control because we're using a sunlight so you can rotate this round and have some coming out the back window and I'm probably going to do that actually something like this and now yeah that doesn't look wrong either because also the sun will be coming through here and that is good I think that's fine for now so what well, I might actually see what this looks like without this and then I'll show you another trick I'll move it back for now, I might put it back, but another trick that they use in photography is also using a back, uh, sorry, a black backdrop. So, uh, so for example, in this shot here, the back of the chair is so dark, and also in here, the back is so dark and it's creating so much contrast, and one thing that you can do to create that is to, in photography, is put up a big black sheet behind, and what that does is it, is it absorbs all the light and means that there's nothing shining back so a lot of light is coming in reflecting off the back wall and coming back but we want this to be as contrasty as possible so what we can do here is add a plane and just make a black plane so let's bring this over new and just set this to black we want it to be zero specular and 100% rough and scale this up and just move this across okay this is also not going to be in local mode so let's just select everything here and do this again okay and we'll see if we can do a quick comparison image so let's just um, select this so that is version 1 and now we just move this out of the way Okay, so I'll now move that out of the way. So let's just see this. So you can now see that this back edge is much lighter now than this one because there's now not a big black wall on the back of the wall. Um, and you can see here that there's a big black reflection and that's something we can also fix quite easily because that is the benefit of doing this in 3D. We're basically creating a lighting studio inside 3D but with all the benefits of 3D. So um, this is lighter here and I want to have it a bit more moody so I will do, I'll bring this back. So let's bring this back in. I'm going to make this actually viewport display and set that to black so we can actually see it. And let's bring this over, something like this. And then what we can do is just go to shader editor and go to object and move this over, mix shader and add a light path and then add a principle. And then this will be white again because that is the color of the wall. So, um, now we can just do is reflection ray and now it is white in the reflections actually something we actually can do here is also visibility so it's visible in the glossy but nothing else I think that should that would work too let's just turn this off we don't want it to be visible anywhere else apart from actually no we do want it to be divisible and diffuse but not in the glossy uh -huh. okay that way around and not visible to the camera okay I think that's fine Hmm, but it is ah, is glossy ray. Sorry, I think that's correct. Am I? Sorry, let me just check this image. I think I'm missing something here. So let's just okay. So that's there. Is maybe it's just so dark at the back of the room that isn't, the effect isn't so visible. Is reflection ray? 
Okay, yeah, that is that is correct. So that's how I want it to be. It must, the back of the room must just be quite dark already. Okay, that that would be fine. I'm just gonna leave that that like that for the, <laughs> I'm gonna leave that like that for now. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and let's see how this room is looking as it is. Okay, right off the bat, I think that this is actually too close to the window, so I'm probably gonna move it something like here, I think, and. Yeah, let's just see how this is looking. Oh, there's still that second sun turned on, so let's turn that one off. I wish that there was an off button. Is there an off button for lights? Because, you know, if let's say I've set this to 150, but I want to try and see what it's like turned off. So I set this to zero, and then I think, oh, what was my original strength again? Um, maybe I guess you can move it to another collection. But it would just be nice if there was just a button to say on or off. So anyway, let's just let's just see how this is looking through this window. Okay, so uh, another problem is that there's nothing coming through, there's no light, and that is because there's nothing, there's no environment, but we can fake that too. So we can pretend that there is light coming through, because there is, but there's no environment light. So what I'm going to do is just remove this HDR, and I'm going to say I'm gonna, I want zero for the background. I might add some background later, so this will just be, if I set this to here, set this to 10, this will now be contributing to the scene, but I don't want it to be contributing contributing to the scene just yet. I want to maybe just make it visible through the transmission. So let's say is transmission ray. If it is a transmission ray, then I want it to be strength 10. So let's put this here. So now the glass is illuminated like crazy. So let's have a look at our reference. So it was quite bright, but it wasn't that bright. So let's try maybe something like three or maybe two. Just a little bit of highlight. I think that's cool, and I think I would leave a little bit of environment coming in, so maybe just an overall whiteness coming into the scene. And I can already tell that the uh, render time is very, very good. Oh, that was a joke, that is quite slow, but never mind. Let's go to free viewport, and so I think we can add portals actually, but I think that only works with environment. Um, so if you have an environment like such as HDR, I don't think it affects the sunlight. Um, feel free to trial it, but for just for this tutorial I'm just going to leave it off. But um, if you want to add an, a portal, just add an area light in the in the window and set it to portal, which is a, a tick, box here, tick box here. But uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that off for now. So let's just do this. Um, you might also notice that I'm doing a square frame and this is Something that I try to do all the time is try to render things in square because then what you can do afterwards is crop it to another size later if you need to. Whereas if you just render it cropped here and then you think, oh man, I really would like to have a bit more of this lamp, you then can't go back. But if you if you um, render the whole thing, then you can change it later. And, and also with social media and everything like this, having square frames, you know, it just depends on what you want to use it for, but I'm going to go with square. I'm going to make it a little bit brighter, actually, so maybe something like 30. Okay, I think this is starting to look pretty cool. I think it's starting to get that effect that I was looking for in terms of the of the light coming in with the immediate shadow here and things like this. And this is not too bright. That was actually something that I had in a previous uh, render, was that the light coming through here was way too overblown, which meant that you can no longer see the shadows coming through here. Um, so that's also something to keep an eye on. Um, what I'm going to do now is make this this frame probably the same material as the gold, or maybe this material. Um, it's always good to reuse materials as well because you know they'll be the same colors, and keeping the same color schemes is always a good idea. And then what I'm going to do is add something to the front of the camera, and then maybe something in the back window. And then I think we're probably good for now. And then I'll move to some post processing, and I will actually be using Photoshop. Um, and I'm sorry if you not don't have Photoshop. Um, I'm sure you can do similar things in other free programs such as GIMP, um, but I use Photoshop literally all the time. So um, that was what I'll be using. Um, yeah. So let's go. Let's go and do that now. Actually, I want to see how this plant looks because I think this is looking really cool. Okay. Yeah. That's basically a dried money plant. Nice. Okay. So let's. Uh, Let's just add these extra things. So what I want to do is add a pl 
plant and a pampas, this one in particular. And I'm going to import that object. And move that to the camera. So this is where we're going to run into some slight issues. So let me actually let's just remove just this and just keep these. So I want this to be really close to the camera and then I want it to be blurred um, so that it's kind of blurry in the camera. But because we're using clipping, we can no longer see the plant. So this would be a really cool feature if they invented a clipping but only for certain objects. So you can include or exclude certain objects. So we can't do that here. So I'm just going to have to uh, select these faces and just extrude it out, which is also a trick which all Archiviz artists will know about cheating a scene because nobody will see anyway. So let's just uh, do this here and turn the clipping way down. Let's just turn it off. Okay, and then let's move this to the camera. Okay. Oh, these are still parented, so let's do Alt P and clear the parent. There we go. And let's just move this to where I kind of want it. This is quite slow because it's actually a particle system, um, which I can probably go to the particle settings and reduce the particle count, but never mind. I like to. Torch myself. Let's just try to move this in here, something like this, to create a little bit of frame. But I also want to still see this chair here. So, yeah, something like this. Maybe this is too much. Let's just rotate this out a little bit and maybe bring this in a little bit more. Mm, I think that's probably okay. Mm, maybe a little bit more. I just don't want to miss this, but I think that's okay. Yep. Okay, now I'm going to add a plant, an outdoor plant, and I'll put this in the back window because I just want this to kind of break up the light that's coming in here. I don't want it to be completely white, so let's just do something like this. And then let's just see how that looks. Okay, that is cool, but I think it's going to be a little bit too green for the scene, so I'm just going to move, maybe move this a little bit back a little bit. I just want it to be a little bit less in the shot. The reason why I think it's going to be a bit too green is that I don't want too many colors in this scene. I want it to be very even all the way through because there's also something else which I might just change here. So because this these these uh, glasses are really picking up the color of this table. So what I'm going to do here is just go to this table and make the transmission color a little bit dark, a little bit more, um, less colorful. <laughs> God, my words, it's getting quite late now. So, um, okay, so let's just move this over here and mix shader and add a principle and add a light path. So maybe this will work. I'm not sure. This is actually something. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so I'm going to add a hue. Hue saturation. So what's coming through the glasses is just going to be a more desaturated version of the actual color because I think it was too orange. And whoa, is the table? Oh, damn it! I accidentally made the table blue. I think this was 0.5, right? Okay, so now we can just set this to be. Um, oh, okay. I'm completely getting this wrong. Let's plug this in here, turn this off, and set the saturation to be 0.5. And then we can plug that in here. So we can still get a little bit of color coming through. OK, maybe a little bit more color. OK, I'm not entirely sure why this is white right now. Am I missing something? this is this is darker and then this is the same let me just make a new hue a, ne a new hue hue saturation because this should be the same color if I if I am not inc incorrect yes and then plug this in here that should be the same okay and then set this one to be 0 0.5 0 0 
Is this not updating? I think that's just not updating. Let me try again. So this should be completely black now. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's definitely getting late. I'm not plugging. <laughs> okay, I'm really sorry. Let's just plug this in here. So that now should be black coming through. Let's just set this to 0 0.5 and 1. Okay, that's that's nice. So let's just do 0.4. Okay, that was enough of that. Let's see how this is looking. And this light, this plant is completely dark. So that is another studio trick we're going to do now and that is having a spotlight or a little, little sorry little light just on this object which is another thing you should really try and do if there's parts of the object which you really want to be lit just put a light on it because that's what they would literally do in a studio too so let's just move this down move this over here and because the good thing that this is in right in the foreground this light is not going to affect anything else anyway um, which, which would be actually another really cool update for Blender would be to add an include and exclude feature for a light. So this light would only affect this, but that is not a problem right now. So we could just do this. That might be a bit too bright, but no, maybe not. It looks like it's being lit from over there. Maybe it's a little bit too bright. Let's move it over. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Okay, and then one thing I might actually is illuminate this chair as well because I want that to be a little bit brighter because it is uh, right next to that black wall. So let's just move this over, uh, Shift D, and duplicate this one. And go down and just put it on this light, on this chair. Because the people looking at this image don't need to know that there's not a door here. So this, well, I mean, that's way too bright. So let's just turn that down. Uh, to be maybe 1 or 0.25. I just want a really little highlight. Let's move this up. Point it downwards. Okay, I think that should be enough. I think that should be sufficient. And I think that's it. I think that's what I'm going to do for now. I, th I hope that this tutorial has been cool. Um, oh, wait, no, sorry. Post-production. So <laughs> what we need to do is render it. So the feet, the, the, what I have here is I have my pixel filter set to 0.15. I wouldn't go too low on that because what that does is it, it does blur the edges ever so slightly so you don't get too bad anti-aliasing. But I quite like it to be quite low anyway because it makes the images a little bit sharper. I also have under color management, I have it set to filmic and medium high contrast. Don't make the contrast too strong in here because then it'll be harder to edit it a bit, little bit later. Uh, one thing I do want to do is actually set um, the file format to TIFF. So when we edit TIFF, <laughs> so when we edit it, if <laughs> sorry, I'm making myself laugh. If we, uh, okay, oh God, I completely lost my thought. Um, when we edit it in Photoshop, it will mean that we're not going to be clipping the colors too bright, too too quickly. So all the brighter parts we can bring down much much lower, and all the darker bits we can bring it much more higher without running out of color space basically. So set it to 16-bit um, TIFF and RGBA, which is alpha. And yeah, that's that's pretty good. And under render settings, so I was having some real big problems with this scene for some reason last time I did it. I usually do adaptive sampling and I usually have it set to 0 0.001. And that is usually makes a nice amount of noise. I just seen a mistake. So there is the plane that I added is not actually through the wall yet. Let's just make that plain because it's I'm getting them stripes which I didn't like in the past image so let's turn them off and, and then I'll continue where I was. Did I add that? Did I? I swear I added a plane here which was made out of wood. But how much wood did a wood chuck chuck a wood? Is it this piece? It is this piece. Maybe it's just not sh showing through yet. Okay let's bring this. Okay I think it's just outside the room so this should be darker now. And while I'm here, maybe I'll make these wires white because they will be harder to see. Oh, and I also forgot this. Okay, so I need to make this frame the same color. So I've already got this as gold marked. And I think that should be good enough for now. And, you know, you can go into more detail, make sure that this is uh, going to be showing up effectively. This is really showing up as a, as a dark black wall when I try to turn that off. So I thought that was darker. Um, 
the back wall. Okay, so okay, so is it reflecting a white wall? Maybe it's just going to take some time to denoise. Okay, I think that's actually going to be fine. I think it was just Blender trying to calculate that black wall. Okay, that's fine. Um, and where was I? I'm going to make these wires white. And you can see this is actually going through the ceiling, but nobody will know, so don't tell anyone. I'm going to set this to be white. Maybe that'll be easier to see then. Okay, that is definitely easier to see against that black wall. Okay, cool, I think that's nice. Um, yeah, so back to render settings. So I've got it yet, yeah, cycles and, oh yeah, so I set this and for some reason I wasn't getting the threshold noise level that I was looking for. So maybe I can try point, point 0.0003. Let me quickly look at the Blender suggestion. Yeah, that was the, that was their recommendation, point zero zero zero. 0 0.001 but for some reason my scene was coming out really noisy I don't know if I was having a bug or something but I ended up setting this to about 1500 to 2000 samples and it took about 45 minutes to render yeah I think that's good I'm then gonna go to render passes I'm gonna turn on denoising data so let's just um, see what oh no god I've forgot something else I'm really sorry I'm got it is getting late so let's click on the camera and I want to turn on depth of field so I'm going to click on the focus object to be the table. I can then click on limits just to check that it's going to the right place. I'm also, actually, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to make this go to the front of the table. So there it is. And just make it go something like this. Ah, yeah, okay, some, something, like, something like this. Woo. And I'm going to make it about six. And now that I'll make this thing extra blurry and then the stuff going into the background a bit blurry too. Um, okay, so... I don't think I've forgotten anything else. Uh, you can also play with these. So it will make some extra render passes so you'll just get like the direct and indirect. That is also pretty cool to do. So when you render, you can then change things later in post-processing. But just for the purpose of this tutorial, that is going to be fine. I'm going to go to compositing. And with the um, denoising data, you want to turn on this denoiser and make sure you plug in these like this. And then you want to add a mix shader, plug in the image here, plug in this one here, and then you will have the ability to change the denoise level a little bit later. So I know, I'm going to put it to something like 0.5, I don't want it to be too denoised because this does make it really soft, um, a little bit too soft. So I, I try to rely more on the samples, I want it to be as denoised as denoised as possible before you do, before you use this because I think if I'm correct this uses AI and it is perfect does a really good job and it cleans up all the edges but people rely on this way too much they, they do renders and they, they put the sample count way too low and they think that it, that their image is finished but you'll really run into some problems where some edges will just not be perfect enough and they'll just be maybe a little bit blurred with where the um, where the AI is trying to think that there is something there when there isn't um, so try to Try to make sure you have as much samples as possible, but that's also reliant on your computer. If, if your computer can't handle too much, then you know, then this is also really, really good. This is really, really good. I'm not saying it's not, but just um, do that. I don't have um, denoising turned on here because that is destructive, and what that does is it denoises as it renders, which means that you can't go back afterwards. Whereas this, you can. So I'm going to set this, yeah, maybe a little bit low again, and I'm going to because I can get adaptive to work. I'm going to say minimum samples 2000 and set this to 2000 because it wasn't working for me last time. So maybe it'll work for you. And oh, I might as well tell you what this does. So what this does is basically um, it adapts the sample rate depending on the object that it is. So for example, a pure white wall will get denoised much, much quicker than something like this. This may require far more samples to get to the required some uh, noise level than a white wall so it will just render this super quick go da 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 that's really quick it's really quick and then concentrate all of its time on the parts which matter and you can save like 30 40 percent on render time just by using that if it works but it didn't for me so never mind um anything else anything else yeah i'm gonna hit render now and then we'll move to post processing and yeah i guess i'll see you in a minute Okay, so it is now the next day. I actually um, let it render overnight, so I'm sorry if my <coughs> my voice is a bit croaky, but it is now morning, and 
this is how it's turned out. So I'm quite happy with how it is. Um, I can actually show, show you my previous version. Um, i try this one. So this is how it was before. Oh, oh yeah, this one had a bit of an error as well. But we can try to just compare. So this was having the sun with a little bit less of an angle on it. So you can see now it's like much larger. Um, I also didn't have anything on the table. And you can see what, what I was trying to do with the glass um, in this tutorial. Here it's come, it comes very, very uh, brown, whereas I didn't really want that. So this is much better. This feels much more natural to me. Um, I also didn't have the plant. And you can see these lines, which are a little bit distracting, whereas now we've got a white line here. And this is just one color wall, which I think is an improvement. So um, I hope that you think so also. Um, you can also see the texture of the wall a bit better in this one than I, than you could in the past previous one. I don't know why they didn't show up very much there, but uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now is just do a bit of post processing and show you what I do. So this is just going to be really quick, um, just a really quick method. I could actually do another tutorial another time to talk you through all of, all of these to tell you what they do. But for now, I'm just going to use the camera raw filter. So if I click this now, and this is basically like a, a Lightroom essentially inside of Photoshop. Um, and I mainly use the curve and also uh, a few of these, but only these very lightly because these are basically do the same thing as the curve. And I find the curve a little bit more intuitive for some reason, but you can just have a play. So I click on auto to see what it suggests, but I always think that it looks a little bit too warm because uh, I like to keep the whites to be white. Um, so maybe just plus one, I think that's fine. And then you can compare the two, which this is not very much difference. Never mind. So now I'm going to maybe increase the brightness and then, yeah, I'm just going to skip this for now. I'm just going to go down to curve to see what I can do because curve will also increase the contrast. Um, so here you can see if I turn up the highlights, this is only affecting the highlights, which is really cool. And then this is affecting the kind of overall brightness of the room and the same with dark. And because there's lots of dark things in this room, actually, so this is probably going to affect it more than most because you can see this is where the curve is starting. OK, um, and this is shadow. So this is the very, very dark parts of the image that you can pull down. So I'm just going to use play with this just to try and get a bit more contrast. I'm going to turn these these down, the white, the highlights down just a little bit because I don't want the highlights to be shining up too much. And because I saved it as a TIFF, we should have a bit more color space to be able to play with. Okay, I think that's cool. I might make the brightness a little bit darker. And we can just compare. So you can see now it's already making it pop. So now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And what I can do now is uh, go to detail and turn up some sharpening. You don't want to turn it up too much because it's going to look really crazy. Uh, but you can just turn up a little bit just to, just to make these edges a little bit sharper. Um, but I can also see that it's also making the noise a little bit crazy. So you can just add a little bit of noise reduction too to soften these edges. OK, and we can just see how that is looking. And yeah, I think that's looking quite cool. And what another thing I like to add is a bit of film grain. But this has already got quite a lot of grain on it already because most photographs have just a little, little bit of grain. So maybe just something like this. And yeah, now I'd like to have a play with this contrast just to see if contrast will just add a little bit more. OK, and then I might just turn down the vibrance just a little bit. So vibrance is almost like saturation, but it's um, softer. I don't know how to describe. So saturation is like the overall color. So this is going to be completely black and white. And this is going to be completely colorful, whereas vibrance, if we turn down vibrance all the way, if there is something with, um, well, there's not much color in my scene already, so this doesn't, you can't really tell the difference, but, um, but it kind of flattens the, it flattens the color brightness. So if you had loads of, pro loads of things in the scene, which are very, very bright, this will kind of bring all of the saturation of all of those colors down to trying to be on the same level. Um, but because there's not many colors in the scene, this is just going to go black and white, but I want to turn this down just a little bit because. I just don't want too much color. OK, I, I think that's kind of fine. I think just for the purposes of this video. And what you can also do here is go to uh, 
profiles at the top here and then you can have some it's like some color lookups essentially and see which one you like I think that one's pretty cool but this one does add a little bit of color to it so I'm just gonna this one makes it a little bit more yellow but I don't want that so I'm just gonna click this and just turn it down a little bit and then what you can do if you think that it is a little bit too yellow you can play with this or what you can also do is one thing I love and that is actually um, where's it gone this is a new Photoshop there we go so you can also turn down the yellows here and turn down the oranges and stuff like this so yeah I think that's kind of fine let's click OK so now because we saved it as a, a smart object did I do that in the tutorial well, if you didn't, make sure you save it as a smart object before you do that, because now it saves it as a layer, so now you can turn it on and off, and now you can compare how it looks, or you can change it later. Um, and then also what you can do then is that if you have another render, so let's say you, you have another render, and you bring it into Photoshop, and you can delete the smart filters, right? You have another render. What you can do then is press Alt and click and drag this to your next render, so then all of your renders will, will keep the same settings so that is just something to remember so let's uh, delete this yeah I think that's cool I, I think this is looking really cool um, I also like on the light um, you can see a little bit of a gradient here whereas in the previous render um, you couldn't really it was really over bright and I think I like my my glass window a bit better here I think that's creating a better effect and yeah you can see my details I think that's nice and you can kind of see what I mean that I didn't spend too long on these parts because you know you can't really see it anyway and because I added a um, I, I just unwrapped this and added a a marked metal already you can see the metals being you know that that's creating the variation that we needed to make it look a bit more realistic we didn't need to go in and add tons and tons of detail because yeah, it's just that would just be a waste of time for that particular item. Um, oh yeah, one thing I did actually do was I actually rotated these 45 degrees because I realised the plates were not actually facing the chairs. Um, so that's just something to <laughs> to keep an eye on. Um, actually, this thing, okay, this thing is just annoying me here. So while I'm while I'm seeing it, so let's just um, this is okay. This is really noisy. I think that if I'm going to render this again, I'll render it a little bit. Um, with more samples but that doesn't matter um, so I'm just gonna this book is just not white enough for me this page is looking grey when most books are kind of white so let's just put this I'm gonna use a levels so try to stay away from brightness because brightness is really flat how it how it makes the image brighter um, so you want to use levels as much as possible because levels does a better job of of affecting the overall color, so brightness. So I think something like this. I think that's. I think that would be good, because now that's how it should be. I think it's actually really dark, isn't it? I'm going to turn this brightness a little bit up. I think you might be able to tell now that I, am never fully happy with the images that I create. <laughs> okay, and now I've turned this brightness up. I'm just going to make the highlights a little bit less. Okay, I'm just going to stop now because I'm just going to end up doing this forever. So, yeah, I hope you like that tutorial. And if you'd like another one, then please let me know and I will do it for you. I might actually put this scene on iMesh for the exclusive members to grab and play with if they want to. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll put it in the description if I do that. So, yeah, thank you and I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, so I have <laughs> I have continued to play with this a little bit more. So what I've done now is I've used a brush. So I've clicked on this brush, and what you can do is then click, um, set the exposure higher, and then you can just click in places of the image that you want to be a little bit brighter, because there were parts that I wanted to be brighter. So I wanted there to be a highlight on this plant, um, and I added some vignette, which is under 
um, here. So you can do this. Uh, so I've brought this down and then I highlighted these areas with this brush. Also added a few little highlights around the scene just to highlight a few areas which I wanted to be a bit brighter. Um, and that is where, where I'm 100% going to leave it now. So thank you.